Okay, so we have seen the notion of continuity for a function of a complex variable. We have also seen the notion of a derivative for a function of a complex variable, and how it's a natural gen generalization of the idea of a derivative for a function of a real variable. But we have also seen how you know, differentiability is a rather strong condition and how you, know, you can have functions which are continuous but not differentiable. You know, and so differentiation is is a rather you know involved idea when you work when you're working with a function of a complex variable. So in this lecture, we will look at how some familiar rules of differentiation, which we you know we take for granted uh, when we're working with functions of a real variable, how they extend when we go to the world of you know, functions of a complex variable. Okay, so we look at some of these familiar rules of differentiation so basically they extend almost directly from you know, differential calculus of real variables we have to be a little careful with how we apply them so if c is some arbitrary complex constant and f of z is a function that is differentiable at z then so the derivative of just the constant is just zero just like with function of a real variable so the derivative of the functions is z is 1 and if you want to take the derivative of some constant times f of z when the derivative of the function itself is must be defined so that's very important right so then you have is equal to c times f prime of z so this f prime of z we are guaranteed has meaning because we say that we are looking at a function which is differentiable at z now if n is a positive integer then the derivative of z to the n is just n times z to the n minus 1, right? So we already worked this out from first principles for z squared, but you can do it for z, z cube, z to the 4, you know, any arbitrary z to the n. And in fact, this result will also extend to negative integers n, provided z is not equal to 0, right? So you're going to get, a, you know, in the denominator, you're going to have like 1 by z power something. So that's why we have to, we have this extra restriction when n is a negative integer, but the rule that the derivative of z to the n is equal to n times z to the n minus 1 will hold for both positive and negative integers and for negative integers provided z is non-zero. Now if there are two functions f of z and g of z both are differentiable at some point z then the derivative of their sum is just given by the sum of their derivatives right so it's not a surprise it's something that we take for granted right? and it also extends here right so again you know this is the product rule right we have two functions f of z and g of z both of them are known to be differentiable at a certain point z then if you want to find the derivative of that product then it's simply given by you know, f prime of z times g of z plus f of z times g prime of z so this is also a familiar rule and again uh, you know the quotient rule if you want to take the derivative of you know the ratio of two functions f of z divided by g of z it's meaningful provided g of z is not zero you are at a point where g of z is not zero then you know it's like taking the derivative of you know the product of two functions so you have g of z times well i mean you're taking the derivative of the product of the function f of z and one over g of z so slightly different but you know effectively you can um, you know you can work it out based on the next rule that also we point out so that's the um, uh, chain rule so but anyway the point is that it's f of z times 1 over g of z so it will come out to be just uh, g of z times f prime of z minus f of z times g prime of z divided by g of z the whole square so then we have the chain rule which is that if, if a function f of z is differentiable at some point z naught and this function g of z is differentiable at the point f of z naught right so it is in this sense that you can think of you know f of z times 1 over g of z and so if you know that g of z is differentiable then you can also work out the derivative of 1 over g of z you know, and use this kind of a chain rule so the idea of the chain rule is g of z is differentiable at some some point f of z naught then the derivative of this nested function capital f of z which is equal to g of f of z is just given by 
you know, this chain rule which we are familiar with, we are familiar with. and so all of these rules are of course best understood by applying them, right? We have applied these rules many times, you know, and the same kind of rules that we use for, uh, you know, functions of a real variable will just follow through, provided, you know, we take this small extra care to ensure that, you know, these functions are all differentiable. If g of z is differentiable at the point f of z naught, then f prime of z naught will be g prime of f of z naught. Then of course you have to multiply by this derivative of prime itself of z naught, right? So basically all the rules that we are familiar with will naturally extend the functions of a complex variable provided, you know, this, uh, you know, differentiability of different pieces of the function are all already given. So let's look at a few examples and, uh, you know, this is best understood by, with you know, many examples by playing examples. So if you look at, I've cooked up some function f of z is equal to 3 times z to the 4 plus 4 times z cubed plus 2z. So simply invoking these properties above, we should be able to write down the derivative of this function. So in general, at any point, z is a very nice, you know, smooth function because it's a polynomial. So all very nice properties are available for this. So it's just going to be 12 times z cubed plus 12 times z squared plus 2. If you wish, you can try to derive this result directly from first principle. Start with the definition, take the limit and convince yourself that the limit holds no matter in which direction you approach the, you know, the point of interest. Let's look at, you know, another function 1 plus z squared, the whole square. So now I can treat this 1 plus z squared, this entire thing as some w, I make it. So it's like w squared. So that's where the chain rule you know, applies. So I can think of this 2 times w. We have seen that the derivative of you know, z squared is just 2z. So here it will be w squared. So 2w but w is 1 plus z squared. And then I have to take another derivative of w itself dw by dz. So that will give me just 2z. So if I expand it out I get 4 times z plus z cubed. Right. So this is something that we can check you know by working out the same result from a different approach we first expand this function 1 plus z squared the whole square it's 1 plus 2z squared plus z to the 4 now if i take the derivative you know it's similar to example 1 it's the sum of it's a polynomial right so you can take the derivative of every term in this sum separately and then you get 4z cube plus uh, 4z right which is the same as the answer we got earlier using the chain rule, right? So it's just very simple stuff, all, you know, things which we are familiar with, the same rules carry through provided, you know, differentiability of different part, bits of your function are assured, which is definitely true in this kind of a case because there were three, so far we have seen two examples of polynomials. Now let's look at a rational function like this. Suppose I want to find the derivative of a function like z plus 1 divided by z minus 1. Of course, I have to demand that z is not equal to 1. Right? If z equal to 1, then it's not even defined. So z is not equal to 1. Then we can use the quotient rule. And the quotient rule tells me that I take the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is just 1, minus numerator times the denominator derivative of the denominator, which is again just 1. So it's z minus 1 minus z plus 1. 1, the whole thing must be divided by z minus 1, the whole square. So the numerator simply becomes minus 2 and then I'm left with z minus 1, the whole square in the denominator, right? Straightforward. <clears throat> okay, so you can uh, cook up your own functions, simple functions, rational functions, polynomials, more complicated polynomials or some, uh, you know, combination of uh, these kinds of you know, terms to create your own interesting functions and check whether rules which are you know we are familiar with, with functions of a real variable when we apply them how they work out to evaluate derivatives of you know quite a, quite a wide variety of functions right so that's all for this lecture thank you